de, de la veille. We had a quiz. And we saw that our faith is the same as the foundational pillars of Sharia. They're often called the five pillars of Islam. I'll remind you what they are. There is only one true God and he sent his messenger to earth. We believe in prayer, in alms giving, which means giving to the poor. We believe in fasting. And we also believe in visiting holy places. People call it pilgrimage. As Christians, we would probably call it not forsaking the gathering of ourselves when we come to church every Sabbath. And the reason why I wanted us to see all of that because this retired American senator whose name is Rick Santorum in 2016, he was, I believe, doing a lecture and he got cornered by a student. And the reason why he got cornered in this argument is because Rick Santorum said something. He was comparing and contrasting the old world with the new world. And in essence, the point that he was making was that Europe was under siege, it was under attack, but America was safe. And why is Europe under attack? Not by whom, I'm not asking by whom, I'm asking why. There's a vacuum in Europe. Europe is atheistic. He called it godless Europe. And in this godless continent, it was going to get filled like a vacuum, sucking in this religion. And because of geography, the religion that this godless Europe was going to suck in was Islam. And he was comparing that continent with his own. Il ce avec le sien. 
What year is this? Do you, do you remember? Est-ce que vous rappelez de quelle année uh, parlons-nous? 2016. Good. Why is that significant? Pourquoi est significatif? Why is 2000 significant? Because of the election. Good. Now, this was in April. Par rapport à l'élection. Oui, nous sommes au mois d'avril. And what is happening just before the elections? What is Donald Trump promising? Qu'est-ce qui se passe avant les élections? Qu'est-ce que promet Donald Trump? So, not a wall. Non pas un mur. Not MAGA. Non pas un MAGA. Good. Travel restrictions. He non, is talking about travel restrictions not letting Muslims into America. Il parle des restrictions de voyage ne permettant pas aux, aux, aux islamites de venir aux états unis because he's saying, Il est en train de dire, we're not foolish like the Europeans. Nous ne pas fous, uh, comme les like Angela Merkel in uh, specifically. Et, uh, Angela Merkel, Merkel, de façon we all know the foolishness that she did. Nous tous, uh, uh, a réalisé. Which, as it turns out, was actually a phenomenal success. Et en fin de compte, ça s'est par un grand so, that's the backdrop of this article, this conversation concerning Rick Santorum. Le de cette conversation, euh, au sujet de Rick Santorum. The argument is, Americans won't allow what's happening to Europe to happen in their country. La, la, la discussion porte sur le fait que les Américains ne vont pas permettre que ce qui s'est passé en Europe se passe également sur, euh, dans leur pays. Because his argument is all these Muslims are on a jihad. Parce que son argumentation c'est que tous ces euh, musulmans sont euh, dans un jihad. And Blind, materialistic, atheistic Europeans cannot see what's happening. But the clever Americans can. Mais les Américains intelligents, eux, ils peuvent. So, this student asks him a question. Donc, ces étudiants lui ont posé une question. And it's a very clever question. Et une question très if you understand the point behind the question. Si vous le point, euh, qui est la question. Rick Santorum made two points. Alors, Rick Santorum, il a émis, euh, deux points. What were those two points that he was making? Alors, quels sont ces deux points qu'il a fait? When he was commenting upon Sharia law. Quand il faisait son commentaire sur la loi Sharia. One is the cause and the other one is the effect. Alors l'une c'est la cause et l'autre c'est l'effet. So he said that Sharia law is monolithic. And therefore, it becomes oppressive. Monolithic means a singular perspective. Ça veut dire une perspective unique. It's either right or wrong. There's no middle ground. Soit, euh, euh, bon ou and therefore you can see why it becomes oppressive. And his argument is, we, Americans, don't want any of that, that kind of thing in our country. 
son argumentation, c'est qu'il dit que nous, en tant qu'Américains, nous ne voulons pas cet état de choses dans notre, sur notre sol américain. Because this is the land of the free. Parce que c'est le pays de la liberté. Four years later, Quatre années plus tard, I'm hoping the people who are listening to this presentation, there's quite a lot of us, J'espère que les personnes qui écoutent cette présentation, il y en a plus, plusieurs d'entre nous là, can all see the foolishness in that mindset. Peuvent tous voir euh, euh, le caractère insensé de cet état d'esprit. So, the student asked him. Alors, les étudiants lui ont posé la question. He says, can you name the five foundations of Sharia. Alors, ils lui ont posé la question, est-ce que tu peux euh, nommer les cinq fondements de la loi Sharia And I assume, dismissively, Rick Santorum said, I don't know. Et euh, je, je, je peux suppose euh, qu'il, euh, Luc Santorum a dit, je ne sais pas. I don't think he really even cared to know. Et je ne pense même pas que ça lui, euh, lui importait de savoir. And why is that significant Because if you were to ask Rick Santorum his belief system, what does he believe in his foundational world view? He believes in Sharia. Lui -même, il dans la loi Sharia. So what you can see Donc, ce que vous voir. is he is part of a movement, il fait partie, euh, movement in 2016 that wants to do what? Il fait partie mouvement, mais que veut faire ce en so someone's already given the answer. Alors, a déjà donné la What does he want to do? Que faire? Not ban Muslims. The answer is already up. Go up. Not protect. He good. He does not want to protect the nation. Il veut pas protéger la nation. If you protected something, you protect something that's valuable. In this story, is Europe valuable or not? No, it's worthless. His argument is, The Muslims want to come into Europe and make Europe great. Son argument c'est que les musulmans veulent entrer dans l'Europe pour rendre l'Europe grande. So, he's part of a movement called MAGA. Donc il fait partie d'un mouvement qui s'appelle MAGA. Make America great and the most important word is again. La grandeur à l'Amérique et son le mot le plus important là c'est again make America great again maga. Now do we all know that that is a lie? Et est-ce que nous savons tous que cela est un mensonge? Which word out of those four is the lie? Et quel est donc euh, euh, parmi ces quatre mots euh, le mot qui est mensonger? Hein? Make America great again. No, which one of the words? Okay, that's fine. Um, so. Not great. Non, ce n'est pas euh, grand, grandeur. Good. Again. C'est le mot again, encore. That's what the key word is, because it's a lie. Et c'est ça le mot clé, parce qu'en fin de compte, c'est un mensonge. It's not that America was never great. It's... Ce n'est pas que l'Amérique n'a jamais été grande. Their, defini their definition of great is what? Great. Quelle est donc leur définition de grandeur? Great is a form of synecdoche. Et, uh, 
La grandeur, c'est une forme de synédoque. Good. Great means Christian. Parce que grandeur ou grand, ça veut dire chrétien. All right, I guess, yes. Ou bien blanc, je pense, oui. So, make America Christian again. C'est euh, redonner à l'Amérique son côté chrétien encore. Now, how do you go about making Europe great? Alors, comment euh, pourriez-vous euh, redonner sa grandeur à l'Europe? How do you make Europe great? Alors, comment euh, rendez-vous cette grandeur à l'Europe? Not white, not Christian. Non pas blanc, non pas chrétienne. Not EU. Non pas l'Union européenne. You have to institute what? Et qu'est-ce qu'il vous faut instituer? Um, Europe is not great. This is a parable. L'Europe n'est pas grande, on dit. Euh, C'est une parabole, il s'agit. Hein. Not democracy. Non pas la démocratie. <laughs> so. What we have to eat, good, we've got it there, let's stop. We have to institute Sharia. How do you make America great? You have to institute the equivalent of Sharia. Ou l'équivalent de la loi Sharia. So, I don't know what to call that, but we'll just go with je, Christian nation. Je sais pas comment appeler cela, on va l'appeler donc la nation chrétienne. So, the irony of this story... L'ironie de cette histoire... Is that Rick Santorum has an accurate perspective of Europe. He sees clearly what's happening. Alors, Rick Santorum a une vue juste de l'Europe. Il voit très bien ce qui est en train de se passer. This is a parable. Il s'agit d'une parabole. Hein? I'm not making any moral comment on what's happening. Je ne fais aucun commentaire moral sur ce qui est en train de se passer. En Now, you remember, in the New Testament, in the Gospels, dans, vous vous rappelez dans le Nouveau Testament, dans les Évangiles, What does Jesus do when he interacts with his enemies? Alors, qu'est-ce que Jésus fait quand il interagit avec ses ennemis? When he speaks with them. Quand il parle avec eux. How does he relate in his conversations? Comment, euh, comment se comporte-t-il dans sa conversation? Yes, he speaks in parables. Oui, il parle en parabole. Why? Mais pourquoi? Let me rephrase my question. Alors, je vais reformuler ma question. He doesn't just ask questions. Non, il ne pose pas que des questions. Why does he speak in parables? Pourquoi parle-t-il en parabole? There are a number of answers. Il y a plusieurs réponses. But the one I want us to have Mais, uh, celle que qu prenne, is he wants to trap them. Il veut les piéger. He does not want to make them understand. He wants to trap the people. Il veut piéger les gens. So what he does, ce fait, he tells them a story. Il leur dit une histoire. I want to read this. He pretends to speak their thoughts as if their perspective is correct. Il prétend dire leur pensée comme si leur approche était juste. I want to say this. They won't like the straight answer. They need to agree on some level. Those are correct answers. Oui, ce sont des, euh, justes. So what he wants to do faire, enfin, is he wants the people to understand what's in their heart, what they're thinking. So, he gives them a story which he knows they can answer. So, all these Muslims, in our parable, 
Are all rubbing their hands saying, we're going to take over Europe. So, this follower of Christ, the student, by the way, I'm pretty sure this student is Muslim. Why is he a follower of Christ? What's he doing? He's using the same technique that Christ uses. Good, he's entrapping him, he's using the same methodology. So he traps Rick Centaurum by saying, if you can see Europe, look what you're doing. Now, what most of this movement did not see Perhaps because we're not Muslim. But this Muslim can see it in 2016. Is that there is a charismatic Christian attack upon the United States. They're taking over what kind of America? Not a lamb, an ungodly, a godless, secular America. That's why they put the word again in. In God we trust. I hope we all have at least some level of understanding of the history of the Christianization of the United States. It's important that you have It's important that you have an understanding of that. Has everyone here heard of this following term? The industrial military complex. I hope we all know what that is. It's the industrial machinery that makes America so rich. After the Great Depression, between the two world wars, Another industrial complex was created. Un autre avait été créé. And this has been far more powerful, far more successful than the military complex that we just spoke about. This is the combination of industry with Protestantism. La combinaison de l'industrie avec le protestantisme. It was the Christianization of the United States. C'est la christianisation de, je sais pas si ça se dit, de l'Amérique. 
And do you know why they did that? Two reasons. Sorry, two groups. Two reasons. Your enemy is my enemy. One group was whom? We'll go with the, someone's already answered. Um, not communism. One what one is? Um, oh, not big. No, not no. Non, quelqu'un a répondu communisme. Non, c'est pas ça. Just waiting if anybody else comes up with the right answer. There are two groups. Non, je regarde si quelqu'un donne la bonne réponse. Il y a deux groupes. Good. Corporate America is one of them. Donc l'Amérique. Industry. The second one is Protestantism. Christianity. Not the elite. The elite is corporate America. So the Christians and the captains of industry come together. And who are they fighting against? Who are the Christians fighting against? Good. Secularism. These godless people. And who are the industrialists fighting against? I want to name this time. Not communism. New Deal is not the person's name. Come, sister Tamina. Good. Roosevelt, the New Deal. <laughs> You're multi talented. So they come together to fight their enemies. What was Roosevelt labelled as? Someone's already given the answer. Socialism. He was called a socialist. Some people might say he was a communist, but I want to use socialist. Which obviously is not true. Now we could deal with that same story and we could see racism right there. But that's a different story. So what I want us to see is once upon a time America was great. And who destroyed America after it was so great? They had 12 years of rubbish to put up with. Where did they... What was those 12 years? Not the years. I don't want the years. Some names. Anybody? Good. We'll go with the lot. We'll go with the first two: Obama and Clinton. So. I think it's 12 years. Maybe someone can correct me. It was these two men specifically, specifically Obama. I've mentioned this name before. 
which I can't remember now. Give me one moment. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to come back to his name. I can't remember his name, but I have mentioned it in the past. So. Thank you, Sister Kathy Brown says it's 16 years, two for each. So it's 16 years, not eight. Sorry, not 12. So. The most significant president of the 21st century was Obama. He completely, very quietly and silently changed America. He took America from being the glorious land to just being a land. And this is what Trump is fighting against. The reason why people said that Obama was Muslim is because he treated Islamic countries reasonably. And all people could see in that was that he showed preferential treatment to them. So, coming back to our story, what Rick Santorum cannot see is that his fundamentalist conservative Christianity is the same as Sharia law. And what he could not acknowledge, I don't think he can even see it, is that the vast majority of Muslim theologians reject this ultra-conservative jihad perspective. So, I want to go back four years. What year are we in? Good. 2012. Who are we going to talk about now? Rick Santorum. Rick, Tan Rick Santorum is... Here in 2012. Who's the president? Good. President Obama. Now, President Obama is an educated black man we all know that. Highly intelligent. Donc, 
que le président Obama est un homme noir très, très, très intelligent et formé, on le sait tous. Now, in America particularly, I think, et je pense qu'en Amérique en particulier, this issue of education becomes a political hammer, a political tool. Uh, cette question de l'éducation devient un, un marteau ou un outil euh, politique. If we were to talk about the two Americas, si nous fallait parler des deux Amériques, what are the two Americas? Quelles sont-elles, ces deux Américains? Not North and South. Non, ce n'est pas le Nord et le Sud. Secular and Christian. Secular. Good. It's the secular and Christian America. Et so, the secular one is called what? What political party is the secular one? Alors, euh, séculière, euh, elle représente quel parti? Good. The Democrats and the Christian one is the Republic. Republican Party. Now, that's a very general statement. It's obviously not 100% true. There are many Christians who are Democrats. So it's generalization. Another gross simplification, Une autre sim simplification aussi, euh, grossière, on va dire. that you can identify Democrats and Republicans over Vous pouvez, euh, donc, euh, les et les is what subject? Sur quel sujet? We just did religion. What's the other subject that you can Quel divide this country on over? On peut diviser ce pays. Well, you can do race. On peut faire la race. So I'm going to go with the first answer we got. Je vais aller avec la a eu. Which is education. So This is not obviously, this is a, just a generalization. Democrats are educated people. They live in the towns, the cities, suburbia. And Republicans are country folk. Et les républicains, eux, ils vivent à la campagne. If you wanted to say it rudely, si vous le dire de façon, uh, vulgaire, in the UK, you would call them country bumpkins. Don't bother translating en, that. En, en anglais, on dit ça, uh, country bumpkins. Ceux qui vivent dans des, uh, à la campagne dans des bunkers. Obviously, that is not Completely true. Bien sûr, pas tout à fait vrai, hein? But it is, I think, an accurate representation. Sorry, an accurate generalization, not representation, accurate generalization. Une généralité, uh, juste. So, in 2012, Obama says something. Obama a déclaré quelque chose. And he is misquoted. Et il est mal cité. Do we know what a snob is? Est-ce que vous savez ce qu'est un snob? A snob. So in English we know maybe someone can okay so we've got we've got the equivalent word I'll give another one I think this is the correct spelling Snob 
A yuppie. So, he gets accused of saying the following statement. Every American needs to go to college. College is university. And Rick Santorum said, What a snob! Does he think to have value, everyone needs to go to university? Now, in reality, Obama never said that. He said the following. So, Sister Elaine, if you give me an opportunity to lay it out before you quibble all the quotes, it's a lot easier. So, tout ce qu'un snob en français, c'est un faux ami. C'est pas snob comme nous en français bourgeois, voilà. C'est urbain, quelqu'un d'éduqué. C'est un faux ami. Go on, Carmen. So what Obama actually said? Alors, ce que Obama a dit, he said it would be good if everybody got some more education. Ça serait une bonne chose si uh, tout le monde pouvait avoir un peu plus d'éducation. He gave three categories. Et il a donné trois catégories. A normal person. Une personne normale. He said they should get more apprenticeship. Il dit qu'il uh, devrait avoir plus uh, de, une formation plus, plus grande ou apprentice. Ouais, une formation plus grande. If you go to a local college... Take another year. Si vous allez dans un, uh, ou université, uh, local, et ben not university. Uh, not university. A local community college. And then if you go to university, do some extra work above what you would normally do. So I think all of that is reasonable. Now, the problem that Rick Santorum has by the way, he is a, an educated person. He has got a, an undergraduate degree and a master's degree. But the point that he was making is that the reason why these Democrats push education is because education is against what? Parce que l'éducation, c'est contre quoi? What is education against? Euh, la formation académique, c'est contre quoi? Religion. C'est contre la religion. The more educated you are, the less you are inclined to follow religion. Parce que plus vous êtes euh, formé académiquement, et bien moins vous êtes enclé, enclin à suivre la religion. Some people call it the cult of university. Does this sound familiar to you? Que cela vous Because it should do. Parce que ça this is exactly the same logic and argument that we use in our movement. We should not send our young people to university. Because it will de-Christianize them. Parce que 
ça va les euh, enlever toute leur chrétienté. You will get brainwashed if you go to university. Vous serez euh, formaté ou euh, si euh, vous euh, allez à l'université. Therefore, university is an anathema. It's evil for Christians. Donc, par conséquent, l'université euh, est, euh, est, 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 est une mauvaise chose pour les chrétiens. This is exactly the same arguments that you and I have used. Adventists believe if young Seventh-day Adventists are turned secular universities, they will lose their way. So we create our own parallel universe. Alors nous avons créé notre univers parallèle. All of this thinking that Rick Santorum has is the same thinking that we have in this movement. And there are people in the congregation, in the audience that are listening right now. who have been damaged and harmed by this same mindset. The reality is this. La est not, there's a, not that there's a problem of education. Ce pas y a un dans the problem is, the more educated you are, the more thoughtful you become, and the less inclined you will be to religion. Alors, plus vous êtes uh, éduqué, uh, plus uh, vous avez des pensées, uh, vous réfléchissez, et uh, moins vous êtes enclin, plus vous êtes enclin à délaisser uh, uh, la religion. The people that I am familiar with, les personnes avec lesquelles je suis uh, familière, who are the worst in this perspective, are elements of conservative Mennonitism. Uh, They're Mennonites. They're taken from uh, Menno Sims, whom you should know. Alors ce sont des it's in the Great Controversy. Do we all know Menno Sims? Can someone put the reference found in GC with the page number where Menno Sims is found? Someone can just do that. Um, they're, they're a Christian denomination. Suffice to say that. Good, we'll go with Anabaptist. That's good enough. So, these ultra-conservative, we'll call them Anabaptists, but they're Mennonites, they are so against education because of this issue they have their own parallel universe their own education system and they deliberately stop education around the age of 14. And if someone can correct me on this, but I think that is grade 9 in the American system. Okay, yeah, so it's grade 9. So they stop education around grade 9 and the American system is supposed to go to grade 12. Le système américain doit aller jusqu'au euh, au grade 12, euh, alors que eux ils cessent euh, au grade 9. C'est comme si nous, c'est jusqu'à la troisième, euh, je crois. Thank you, Sister Elaine. It's grade 12, yes. So they missed the last three grades. Donc, euh, ils, euh, comme ils cessent l'école à 14 ans, euh, ils ratent donc euh, les trois derniers euh, grades. 
Donc pour nous, ça serait quatrième, euh, quatrième, troisième. They do that deliberately. Et euh, ils font cela d'une façon euh, délibérée. Why? Pourquoi? What are they trying to prevent? Qu'est-ce qu'ils essayent donc d'empêcher? De, Good. They're trying to prevent the young children being lost in the world. Ils essayent d'empêcher que les jeunes gens euh, ne soient perdus dans le monde. It's worse. They don't actually want their children to get what we would call a profession or a career. C'est pire parce qu'ils veulent même pas que leurs enfants aient une profession ou une carrière. I don't know if you're familiar with the term white collar. Je sais pas si vous êtes familier avec ce, uh, ce terme là, uh, les cols le col blancs ou white collar. White collar means an office worker or a professional job. Donc uh, uh, les cols blancs ça veut dire donc uh, un, prof, un, un, un métier... Uh, uh, manage, manager ou bien uh, administratif uh, dans les bureaux. <laughs> Lawyer, doctor, accountant, all those types of jobs. Les, uh, les cadres, les, uh, les, uh, les avocats, les uh, docteurs, tout, tout ce type de travail, de profession. They deliberately create a crippled education system so that the young people can only become farmers or carpenters. Alors, ils ont développé tout un système d'éducation académique afin que les jeunes puissent devenir des fermiers, des charpentiers, des manuels. I want you to think how sick that is. Et j'aimerais que vous puissiez réfléchir au combien c'est malsain tout cela. And as you think that, et alors que vous réfléchissiez à ça, I want to remind you, if you're not sure, Et vous rappeler, si vous pas sûr, this type of thinking is only a hair's breadth away from our thinking. Uh, alors ce type de pensée uh, est quasiment synonyme, uh, syn analogue à la nôtre. Pas sûr de la signification, si vous m'aidez. It's very close to our thinking. Ok, c'est bien ça. Donc, c'est très similaire à notre euh, pensée. So, what they're going to do... Alors, ce qu'ils vont essayer de faire... In the name of God... Au nom de Dieu... Is to protect their children from the world. Donc, c'est de protéger leurs enfants du monde. Does that sound nicer? Est-ce que ça semble plus... Euh, Est-ce que ça semble meilleur comme ça? Of course it does. When you sanitize it, it all sounds beautiful. Bien sûr, quand euh, vous euh, tout cela semble bien quand vous euh, le comment on dit ça déjà. Forget the name. Yeah. Tell me when you're ready. I'm waiting for you to see. Okay, so I'm saying this mindset is the same mindset that we have. Protect the children from the world. Alors je dis que cet état d'esprit c'est le même état d'esprit que nous avons de pouvoir protéger les enfants du monde. If you send your children to university, they will get brainwashed. Et si vous donc Euh, protéger, euh, vous empêchez vos enfants euh, d'aller à l'université, ils ne seront pas donc formatés. In the context of our parable, et dans le contexte de notre parabole, God forbid, but they will stop being Republican, they may become Democrats. Alors Dieu, que Dieu l'interdise, euh, ils vont pas devenir, euh, ils vont devenir certainement démocrates. Whatever level you go at, I want us to see the principle behind this. Education is evil. Le principe qui est derrière, est que est Giving our children the ability and the tools to think for themselves is dangerous. 
donner à, aux enfants euh, des outils, la capacité de penser pour eux-mêmes, eh c'est dangereux. And danger is wrong. Et le danger, c'est une mauvaise chose. Hein. Rick Santorum believes that. Et Rick Santorum, il croit en cela. These Mennonites believe that. Les Mennonites, ils y croient aussi. You believe that. Vous y croyez également. And who else believes that? Et qui d'autre encore croit cela? Who else? Qui d'autre? Qui d'autre? Muslims. Good. We'll go with Muslims. Euh, Muslims believe this as well. Les musulmans aussi, ils y croient. That's why they have their own education system. All the same mindset. Tous, pour tous, la même, le, le même état Take yourself out of the world. Alors vous retirez, euh, vous retirez du monde. And create your own bubble. Et, euh, créez votre propre bulle. And exist in that. Et à and the problem is. Is that this creates cultism? Ce, cela, euh, ça, euh, crée, euh, des, des For Rick Santorum, it's called it's called the cult of college or the cult of university. For Rick Santorum, c'est euh, donc le, la secte du, de, du, du lycée ou de l'université. The reason why it is so wrong. Pour si If you take the Islamic faith, si vous donc cette foi, euh, there are two groups. Il y a deux, deux groupes, hein. The elite and the masses. Et, euh, la masse. You will find that the elite are always what? Vous allez que les élites, ils sont toujours, hein, quoi? Finish my sentence. They're always good. They're always educated. And the masses, et la masse, they want to keep them uneducated. Ils veulent, euh, soient, euh, soient pas so that's what Islam looks like. That's what conservative Protestant America looks like. So, why have we spoken about this? Alors, pourquoi -nous de tout cela? What is the point or the issue that I wanted us to see? I was asked a question. If I can find it. Um, I'm almost there. Alors pour les Ménonites, c'est la tragédie sec à partir de la page 254.3 en français. OK. The question goes like this. La question est s'exprime ainsi, s'articule ainsi. From France. De la France. Homeschooling and Macron's law. Euh, l'école à la maison et la loi de Macron. If we must consider the law on separatism in France as a nationalist law that will stigmatize the Muslim population. Alors, 
s'il nous faut euh, considérer euh, la loi euh, française qui euh, stigmatise euh, euh, la communauté musulmane. I'm going to read the question as it's written, and I'm going to have to read. I'm going to have to paraphrase it because the the English is not so good. So I'm just going to read it as it is, and then for the translators, I'll re paraphrase it. So let me read it all in one go. If we must consider the law on separationist on separatism in France as a nationalist law that will stigmatize the Muslim population, how else should we react to its consequences? on the suppression of the right of parents to do homeschooling for their children. Is this a violation of our freedoms? Should we join the associations that are campaigning, protesting for the safeguard of this right? Or can we consider that God has prepared us for this evolution of things? Parenthesis, vaccines, um, message of equality, conspiracy theories, etc. So, I'm going to rephrase the question in a simple way. Je vais reformuler la question d'une façon simple. There's a law in France. Donc, en France, il y a une loi. And this law is apparently stigmatizing the Muslim population. Et cette loi, en fait, stigmatise ma population musulmane. And how should we react to the consequences of this suppression. When it impinges upon the rights of parents to homeschool their children, or let me rephrase that, it impinges upon the rights of parents to educate the children in the way they want to. Quand cela affecte la façon dont les parents veulent éduquer leurs enfants de la manière dont ils le souhaitent. Is this a violation of our freedoms? Alors, est-ce une viola viola violation de notre liberté? Should we protest against this? Est-ce qu'il faut qu'on proteste, proteste contre cela? Or, is what's happening correct? Good? Ou ce qui, et ce qui se passe, alors, est-ce une bonne chose? Now there's more to this discussion, but I'm just dealing with the homeschooling issue. Mais je vais juste parler de la question de l'école à la maison. I'm hoping now that you can see how we've approached this issue. Et j'espère que vous pouvez voir maintenant de quelle façon nous avons abordé cette question. We've approached it from the same perspective as Christians have approached it. Which is what? What's the approach that we took in our parable? Islam is, finish the sentence. La phrase. Islam, Good or bad? Bien ou Islam is bad. Islam, bad, 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 bad. <laughs> yes. Islam is bad. Islam, And therefore, if you have a bad system... Par conséquent, si vous avez un mauvais système, Can you defend it? Est-ce que vous pouvez le défendre? No. No. Should you defend it? No. Est-ce qu'il vous faut le défendre? No. Now, the difficulty comes La difficulté arrive because what are all of us? Nous sommes là. What do we follow? Qu'est-ce qu'on suit? Not Christians. No. We follow Sharia. Ah bon? On suit la Sharia. Yes, ah bon? Really, we do. That's the problem. We have the same mindset as Muslims. C'est ça le problème. On a le, le même état d'esprit que celui des musulmans. So if this godless, weak, 
European nation wants to restrain Islam and why would they want to do that? What is Islam? Sharia Islam. Cause and effect. No, not that one. I'm not going to repeat that word. It's monolithic. And when you're monolithic, you become oppressive. It needs to save. This godless government needs to save society. To protect society. From what? Needs to protect society from this monolithic, oppressive mindset. Now, that's all okay. We all agree with that. When the monolithic system is them. Those other cults. But when the, magni the magnifying glass or the searchlight comes upon us, what do we cry? Unfair. We're not like them. So let's respond to that. Are we like them? We've proven that we are, and that's the problem. Go on YouTube, and you can see some nice. Beautiful testimonies by Muslims who talk about their freedoms and joy that they have. The rights that Islam offers them. And when you watch those, pre those uh, testimonies, what do you do? You laugh. You laugh at the ignorance of those people. But when it comes to your own experience, sure, we pity them. But when it comes to our own experience, we say we're nice people. We're reasonable people. We're not criminals. But what I wanted us to see is that at the core, at our foundation, we have the same mindset. And if you think you're nice, they must be nice. If you think you're free, then you must believe that they are free. If you think these Muslim women, these look Muslim Muslim women, are restrained because they have to wear hijab. Ask some of them. 
They would say they love living that way. It's a beautiful way to live. And what do you think when you hear that? We'll just go with the word pity. Just equate that to skirts. Or head covering. All of those things that we participate in. And we think all of our women are free. It's exactly the same dynamic. The mindset is the same. So, when we start thinking about the issue of homeschooling, and it is addressed or tackled from the perspective of Islam, how many of you would be happy if there was a school near you that all the Muslim children went to they're not taught the same curriculum that you're taught. They're rigid and monolithic in their views. They're taught pseudoscience. Pseudoscience, false science. They're educated using a different language or vernacular. Would you be scared about those children and for those children? Of course you would. You'd be scared of those children as they grow up. What will they turn out like? They're fundamentalists. And you'd also feel sorry for them. These girls are forced to dress in a certain way. Now you take that same dynamic and you bring it into your own personal experience. And I think in that way you will begin to understand this question in its true perspective. We run out of time. In our next study together, we will continue to use this question as a platform or a launching pad to address this wider issue. How do you think? How does your brain work? So we're looking at the precept and the policy. Policy is example. 
So what I want us to see is how we think and it's going to be done through the lens of homeschooling. Already, based upon the discussions that we've had together, as you have begun to see how you think, I hope that you can begin to critically analyse your thoughts and ideas of education. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness and mercy. I pray that you would guide, direct and bless us. In the meditation and study of your word. As we consider who we are. The only way we can do that. Is by having a reference point. We call that compare and contrast. Help us to use this methodology to better understand who and what we are and how we think. As we juxtapose ourselves with other people in the world, we pray that we might become better people. In Jesus' name, Amen. Dans le nom de Jésus.